I really like vTest. vTest, I think, is the best way to add testing to your Vue or your React app. I really like it better than Jest in many ways. And I think what works really well with it is adding in the testing library. So I believe those two together make sense. If you're on the Vue.js side, adding Vue test utils is awesome as well. And so I wanted to give myself a challenge because I think this would be a fun thing to do. I know you guys have been looking for content on vTest. I have this application that I did a couple of weeks ago. This is using Cloudinary. It, it's able to retrieve images. It caches those images. Cloudinary is pretty awesome. But I can click on any of these images and I can essentially make changes to them. I can change the opacity of the image. Now, in this app, I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if I could add testing to it? And I want to test the button component that I'm using at the bottom here. So I have one called grayscale. I have one called pixelate. You can see I click on it. It's, it's updating the picture. I thought it'd be an interesting idea to see if I can add a test for these, just to make sure that if anything changes in the future, that I know these tests will pass and that it will continue working. To do this, I'm actually using a Nuxt app in the background, and I'll put a link to this full application. Make sure you check out Cloudinary as well. I think they're an amazing service. If I go back here, there's actually a whole installation guide for Nuxt and getting testing up and running. So let's walk through that guide right now, and I'll we'll use this Cloudinary app that I just showed you, and we'll see if we can get it up and running. So I'm gonna stop the server, and I'm just gonna follow this guide right here. First it says, that uh, you should just copy and paste this. This installs everything you need. So you can see here, it's installing the NPM Nuxt utils. You'll see here, the Nuxt uh, test utils, vTest, v uh, view test utils, and Happy DOM, and also Playwright Core. So if we wanna do some end-to-end -end testing, it's there as well. Now, one thing this is missing is the testing library. So let's install that real quickly. And if you look at the official testing library documentation, it's in there, but we'll just do this manually. And so this will install at testing library view. And that's kind of, I feel like that's one of the better ways of doing testing. Okay, so we have it all installed. And if we go back through the guide, it says we need to add in a new Nuxt module. And if you're familiar with Nuxt, adding Nuxt modules are so simple. We just need to just add it to this array here. Okay, great. So now it is in our list of modules. And then the next thing we need to do is we add it, have to add in a new vtestconfig.ts file. So I'm going to do that real quickly. Uh, I'm going to put it in the root folder. It's going to be called vtest.config.ts. And then I'm going to copy and paste this. Now, one thing it recommends here is that you can have different types of tests in your Nuxt app. You can have runs that are ones that are running directly with vTest, but you can have ones that don't use the Nuxt runtime. I don't know what situation you would use to test without the Nuxt runtime. I think it's probably pretty essential. So what you need to do is just add this testing environment uh, Nuxt into it. So let's add that in here. So we'll add in this test and then environment and then we'll add Nuxt in there. And what this does is it just makes so that any of the testing files that we have will use the Nuxt runtime. Now there's a lot of other things you can do here. You can do built-in mocks. If you guys are interested in like a full Nuxt testing guide, let me know, leave a comment below. But I just wanna see if I can get one of my components tested. And that's the goal. Uh, first, I'm gonna go to the package.json and make a quick update here. Of course, I don't have any way to test, so I'm just add in test here, and then it's just gonna run vTest, which looks good. And then if I go back to my list of my folders here, which you can kind of see, I have this components folder at the top. I'm kind of blocking it a little bit, but I'm just gonna create a new folder underneath it, and I'm gonna call it underscore, underscore, tests, underscore, underscore. This is kind of the convention that you see uh, with underscore, underscore. And this is where you usually put your test. Now, if this was a production environment, I might actually make a folder for each one of these components. And then each one of the, inside each one of those folders, I might have this underscore underscore tests. I might also do some uh, with an index TS and export some stuff out. Just for this demo, I'll just leave it like this, but let's create a new file. We're gonna call it attribute button.spec.ts. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to test that that attribute button, that button that I showed you earlier. Now, if we look at the source code for the attribute button, it's 
fairly straightforward. What it does is it takes in a couple of things. First, it takes in a prop called effect that we are sending over. It also takes in this attributes, which is this array of objects. And then what happens is when you click on it, it changes this value, whatever the name of this effect is, to true. If we kind of look at the what it looks like in this page, here is the actual attribute button. We're passing in this V model, which is this effect. By the way, this define model is a brand new feature of Vue 3.4. It allows you to do two-way data binding with a lot less boilerplate than you had to do in the past with a V model. If you are interested in that, check out my previous video when I added it to it. I'll put a link in the description. And then I'm also adding this remove background. And so this attributes is a kind of a really big object here. It's a big reactive object with a bunch of things in it. And what I'm saying is when you click on it, we're gonna add in another key and then set it to true. So that way it updates it. And this big attributes is also being added into this Cloudinary component so that way it displays correctly. So let's see if we can add in some way. First, we wanna, let's do the very basic test is just to make sure it renders correctly. I think that's always a good place to start. And we'll need to import a few things in from V. And then I always like to have every single one of my components or that I'm testing. First, I name the name of the test after the component. And then I add a describe. And then the first part of the describe is the name of the component. And that makes it easier when I run the test to see that, that it ran. And then in here is where I put the test. And of course, the first test would be the it. And it would be like attribute button can render that might be it or can render attribute button something like that and the way i handle tests and this is kind of best practices is that you always do three things you arrange act and then last thing you do is assert in the top of this describe here i can put some kind of global variables that i'm going to use in other tests so i'm going to start with that now to get this working, I probably want to have an effect because we do have some props. We're, we're passing this prop. I'm going to call it move, remove background. And then I'm going to have this attributes. And those that's the uh, reactive variable that's connected to our V model. And it will be updated whenever the values, whenever someone clicks on it. So I'm going to have this attribute here and a reactive. And I'll make effect here and then it'll be just an empty. And sometimes I like to do when I do testing, I like to open it up in the other screen just to see kind of what I'm doing. So that can, that makes sense. So I have this define model, which is part of the V model. And then I have this define props. So you can imagine this is like, I'm just kind of arranging everything I want to do here. And then so in this can render, I need to now see if I can get this component to render. And the way I can do that, First, I want to add in the button name. I have a slot down here, and that means we need to pass in the name of this button. So we're gonna have a const button name. I'm just gonna call it hi for now, just something silly, but that'll work for us. And then we need to use something called render suspended. And this is a part, if we look at back at the official documentation for next, it recommends you use this thing called render suspended. It allows you to render any view component within the Nux uh, using Nuxt environment using the testing library view. Since we're using the testing library view, we'll need to use this render suspended. So let me see if it'll import here. So I'm gonna wait. So I'm gonna import it in. All right, and then make this async. So render suspended. And this is where I'm gonna pull in the attribute button. Now, one thing I notice is at least my VS code always imports it from this dollar, this hashtag build. And really, we don't want it to import from there. It's not going to work correctly. So we actually just have to import it directly into the Zach file. And then since it's a default export, we just need to get rid of the curly brackets. And so now we have this render suspended. Now, this would work if we weren't passing anything in, maybe if it was a very simple component. But we have some props and some slots. And to do that, we have this second argument. And we have a whole bunch of things we can pass to. You can see your adders, base elements, data. So first we want to deal with the slots. So we know we want to have a default slot and it likes it as a function and we'll just do button name here. And then we want to deal with the props and this is a little bit more complicated. So here's the props here. We're going to have one called the effect. 
that's going to be one of the props passed in. And the next is this V model, this defined model that we pass in. It's a little quirky when you're dealing with the view testing library, but we can get it working. I had to look this up before this video, but this is how you would do it. First, we have this effect, but now we have to add in something called model value. And then we pass in the attribute. In this case, we called it attribute, probably should be attributes. I don't know, that sounds better, I think. And what this does is when you add a V model onto a component, it's like a shorthand for doing an emit backup, but also it's defined on the props as model value unless you change the name of it. It's kind of a shorthand for adding in a way to emit changes and updating the value on it. So just keep in mind that this is the way to do it. We'll show you in the next example of how to actually test to see if it works after it's clicked and it, I'll explain that. Okay, so now we have this render suspended here and the next thing we wanna do is just to see if the button has actually been, is, is displaying. So I'm gonna assert, I'm gonna spect, screen, we're just gonna do git by, and by the way, the screen I need to import it in. That's another a utility from, it's a utility from the testing library. So we'll import the testing library in. So import, okay, we got screen in here. And screen allows you to make, to kind of query the screen at that time. We can do find buys, we can look for different types of alt text. It really works great if your component and your app is, is accessible. So let's imagine we just want to grab the values out of here. So I'm going to grab get by text and I'm just going to say, let's grab that button name. All right. So we have our first test in here and we can just run NPM run test. We added that to the package JSON and let's see if it works. Cool. So we see one pass, it can render. So we did this correctly. So next thing I need to do is to run a, a test that actually presses a button. So we have this click handler here. Let's see if this click handler works. So it should take this attributes effect and add in an effect with true in it. So whatever the name of this effect is that we pass in, it'll add true to it. So let's add that in. So we're gonna add in a second one in here and I think I'm gonna call it changes the effect to true when clicked. It's gonna be async and then we're gonna range first. And first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do button name and I'm gonna call this remove background. It's kind of similar to what we have and what a user would actually have. And now I'm gonna have this wrapper here and I'm gonna do that await render suspended again. And I'm gonna pass in that attribute name, the attribute button that is. This time we're gonna have a couple of new values in here. First, for the props, let's, let's add the slot in first, I suppose. We're gonna have the default slot and that's still gonna be that button name. But for the props, we let's change that up. So now we have the props, we're gonna have the effect still. And now we're gonna have that model value and that's still the attributes. But now we wanna make sure that when someone clicks it, that it actually works. And to get the V model work, uh, you have to add in this on update. So this is essentially like doing an emit. So I'm gonna do on and it's gonna update the model value. And then we have an E, which is an empty object here. And that's the type. And then we're gonna do wrapper and we're gonna do something called re-render. And re-render is a way that we can set the props back that was sent to it. So we're gonna re-render it with new props with the values sent in. So now this is essentially a way we can use V model and have it working inside our tests because it won't automatically work unless we specifically add this model value and this on update. Okay, so now we have this and now we need to act. So we need to act on this. And there is an option, in, there's something called fire event, which is a way you handle events inside testing library. So I'm gonna add in this fire event. And so I'm gonna wait fire event, and then I can do all sorts of different actions, different type of events. Obviously we're gonna do the one that says click. And then we're gonna use that handy dandy screen helper again. We're gonna get by text, and then we're gonna pass in the button name into that text. So that was button name. So this should have clicked the button. And now we can do our expect. So we're gonna do our expect, pass in the attributes. So we think that this attributes up here is going to change because you could see here after you click it, it gets reassigned and now we have this effect true. 
So we are going to make sure this equals, it's gonna have this effect. And then inside here, it's gonna have effect as the name, and then this should be true. So it's gonna match exactly what it shows here in this other side. So let's see if that works. All right, it already ran while I was saved it. That's a nice thing about VTest and running it. It's super duper quick and everything's passed. So we uh, did this wrong. Let's imagine we did this wrong. So let's say we put false in here. It's always good to like check the negative when you're doing testing because sometimes it'll say it passed and then you put in the opposite and it still passes. And then you obviously there's something wrong with the test, especially if you're doing with, if there's some weird timing issues. But here it is, you can see obviously remove background, I put in false, it's supposed to be true. So we know that this component is working correctly and obviously as you see, you see here it's true and this effect name that we passed in, which we called remove background has been added as on this object as we expected. So let's change it back to true and it works. All right, I, I hope you guys made it all the way to the end. I think this is pretty exciting to be able to add tests into a view app. This really, I did a little research before this video, probably like 10 minutes just to look up this. It's really straightforward to use. Leave a comment below if you find this useful. I can create a whole course in VTest. There's so many things it does, but I'm, I'm really glad it works really well with Nuxt. Let me know what you think. Thanks.